On today's episode, Tim Cast gets raided again, food shortage and fuel crisis coming to Australia, and the left doesn't know what a woman is. Let's get into it. Hi guys, thanks for joining me here on the fifth episode of Crossing the Line, and let's get straight into it, shall we? Aussies warned of the next staple vegetable likely to be hit with shortages. As you can see, we are still suffering from sh food shortages across Australia, and the US is also running out of baby formula and things like that. Toilet paper in my local town seems to be disappearing yet again. No frozen foods that have anything to do with potato anymore. Um, lettuce has hit 12 to $15 a head. What is this? That would be lettuce. Lettuce! Lettuce! It's a vegetable cookie. The men need the four basic food groups. I got you four basic food groups. Beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. KFC has started substituting cabbage on their burgers, so you know the tradies are going to absolutely lose it if they can't go and get their zinger meal. Now, this was taken a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, um, two people going and rummaging through the lettuce to tear off all the old leaves. Now, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that do this. When I worked in a supermarket, there was those kind of people that, you know, used to go and they'd raid anything, you know. There was a bloke who used to come in and buy all the old chicken frames and stuff like that. They'd just get the bare minimum, uh, I wouldn't even call some of it edible food, but they some people would still eat it, but uh, these people here just seem to be... I'd class that as stealing. I don't know about you, but uh, if I saw someone come into my supermarket and started pulling apart all the lettuce and taking it out without paying for it, I wouldn't be letting them do that. But, you know, uh, let's have a look, shall we? Very hygienic. <laughs> yeah, dead set. Now, um, it's not the worst thing in the world to happen, obviously, but uh, it just goes to show you the uh, extent some people are going to go to. Um, $12, $15 a head of lettuce. No, thanks. Oh, I think I'll fucking, I'll do without. Oh, I don't need lettuce that fucking much. Luckily, I've got a garden full. But, um... Yeah, maybe drug dealers will start growing lettuce instead, eh? Uh, maybe I should sell those few and retire. I've got about a dozen down the back that are ready to ready to go, and I think I'm maybe I'll take them into Subway. They're using cabbage on their on their sandwiches instead of fucking lettuce. I, I don't know how you just go and substitute cabbage, or you know, cabbage for lettuce. It fucking doesn't taste the same. <laughs> It'd be like putting, uh, you know, if you use cabbage in a fucking salad, you get a coleslaw. If you use fucking lettuce in a coleslaw, you get a salad. It doesn't work. You can't just swap them out. But um, this is just a growing list of things that people are running out of and can't get a hold of or, raise, uh, you know, rising inflation. We've got fuel um, skyrocketing again. Look, onions. Fucking onions are going to be hard to get. Uh, the floods have decimated a lot of um, a lot of crops, but uh, you know, I would, when sorry, change I happens, you know, I I wouldn't be paying twelve, fifteen dollars a head of lettuce or um, look what else we got? Uh, fresh herbs, kale. Oh shit, the vegans are going to be fucking upset now. Lebanese cucumbers. Wow. <laughs> Zucchini, beans, tomatoes, capsicum, berries, broccoli, and spinach. Now, Queensland, it says here, uh, explained devastating floods in Queensland. The main driver of these shortages wiping out 80% of lettuce crops. Now, that happens from time to time with the fires. We had uh, issues with uh, beef, I believe it was, because there was just uh, no feed for them. It was too dry. It was fucking devastating. But um, this isn't just happening here. It's happening all over the world. Uh, Ukraine is a major exporter 
of wheat and grain. Australia is too, but we send to, uh, seem to send a lot of ours overseas instead of using it here. So <clears throat> don't be surprised if in 12 months to the start of next year sometime that uh, around Christmas even, say Christmas would probably be a big one if we're going to have a fire, bad fire season again or just, you know, people doing a local run on the shops like they you do uh, every time it floods or every time um, they're about to go into lockdown, they just empty the shops. But um, don't be surprised if you won't be able to buy bread or flour, uh, things like that, like um, wheat bix, Vitabrix, uh, cereals. They're going to be running out of grain by that time and the prices could just skyrocket overnight. Very good. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! Come back! One year! <sighs> That's not the only thing going on here today. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, some people seem to have forgotten or just don't know, I don't know whether they knew or not, what a woman is. Now, uh, the Daily Wire, they're an American uh, news organization, I'd say right-wing, right-leaning, you know. Um, ben Shapiro is part of there. Matt Walsh, uh, this fella, he is. he has just released a documentary. You can go onto their website, sign up for it, and uh, download the documentary. They're also making movies, um, television shows, I believe, and even kids shows uh, from... Not necessarily a right-wing perspective, but not a uh, left, liberal, LGBT, brainwashing children into things uh, perspective anymore. So this documentary is basically him just going around asking all sorts of people, um, doctors, psychologists, uh, normal people, Jordan Peterson's on there. Um, what is a woman? And you would be surprised at some of the answers. Well, most of them don't give him an answer. A few of them storm out after uh, he asks that question. Apparently, it's a loaded question, but it's um, you wouldn't think it'd be too hard to determine what is a woman, you know. Um, this is just the uh, YouTube video of the focus group, the reaction of the focus group, and uh, let's have a look. What? No, I, the interview's what? over. Please you want to know what, what is a woman? Please, turn off the cameras. The documentary that we're about to watch explores the hot button issues of transgenderism. What somebody else's truth is might not be my truth. Gender dysphoria. Oh. And gender reassignment surgery. So seeking the truth is bias. Do you think this film is going to make some people upset? Absolutely. There are more than two genders. Absolutely not. No, that's not true. You the education no, system. No, they're not. Oh my gosh. When I have to share my bathroom, when I take my granddaughter. No, no. Of course it's not okay. What box do you live in? I have chicken, I have rooster, it's it. This isn't you. Somebody being like this. It's a man. This is like America. This. Oh my gosh. Now, um, I have chicken, I have rooster. <laughs> he was a boy, she was a girl. <clears throat> <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's basically a describe it, I'd say, you know, like, um, fantastic documentary. Uh, it's entertaining. Uh, it's also quite a bit scary how they get into depth about how, um, some doctors, uh, there's a lady... This lady here, actually. Sure. Uh, at what age can a child first begin to transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? As you can tell by her hair, she's... Um part of the left i suppose it's a badge of honor they wear uh yeah they she goes into depth about talking about how um kids of any age can change their gender um i think she's talking about four-year-olds at some point which is pretty disgusting and uh pretty scary i, I don't know about you but 
kids when they're four years old, they're still running around eating boogers and um, thinking they're a unicorn or a spaceman. A leopard on all levels except physical. I am a wolf. I don't think they have the mental capacity to pick what gender they are to the point of where they're going uh, and putting them on hormone blockers and which is the same chemical and the same drug that they use to castrate pedophiles, by the way. Uh, that's a little tidbit. Now, that part of the conversation is very interesting. Uh, go and check it out uh, on the Daily Wire. Dot com they're going to go onto their website sign up and uh watch the watch the documentary there it's quite entertaining and scary at the same time but definitely give it a give it a watch now we're moving on to timcast irl if you guys don't follow timcast they are a i'd say right wing ish media organization they're quite liberal um <clears throat> american liberal and Australian liberal, I'd say, um, they were not necessarily swatted live on air again, but they had a credible threat against them. They had to evacuate the building halfway through at a podcast. Uh, I believe, yeah, it was um, Tommy Altman uh, on with them. They had to go and do the episode again afterwards. The entertaining part is halfway through, uh, an hour and 10 minutes into it, about 10 minutes, uh, they had to leave. Um Something could happen. It's still unsure what's happened there exactly, but they had a credible threat against them. They've upped their security, seeming this is the ninth time this something like this has happened. Um, they've had they've had a SWAT. They've had several swattings. A bomb squad called out to them. Uh, when Marjorie Taylor Greene was on, I believe, um, at least once, and Lauren Southern, she's been on there as well. And uh, whilst they've had a swatting, uh, it. It's happening about once a month, maybe twice a month now. Um, the show's fantastic. They talk about everything and anything. Um, Ian Crossland here, he's a good laugh. He's a bit of a fruitcake uh, when it comes to things. He's a bit of a hippie bloke, but it, it's entertaining. Everyone's got a different opinion, different view on things. And it's just people trying to work out the issues of today. It's um, nothing out of the ordinary from what you'd probably talk about at work or talk about with your friends or your family. And, you know, they're getting attacked for it every day. Uh, they, you know, people are trying to kill them with these swatting. So that's what happens. If you don't know what a swatting is, swatting is, um, save your live streaming like these guys were in the podcast or what I'm doing now, make a video. Um, if I was live streaming it on Facebook or Twitch or something like that, um, some smart ass in the comment section would generally call the police, say that you've had a hostage situation where you are. Um, you may have killed someone or something along those lines. So they send a SWAT team around. Kids have been killed by this. It was a trend uh, going on a few years ago now. Um, seen videos of kids having flat, their doors kicked in, flashbangs thrown in and getting shot in the face um, live um, I believe one kid was shot in the head with a rubber bullet as well. It's, it's, a, I'm pretty sure it's a felony in the U S um, <clears throat> seems to be quite popular there in Australia. Not so much, but, um, you know, they have a, quite a larger population of, uh, streamers and political opponents and pundits, I would say over there. Um, <clears throat> it's a tactic used generally by the left to, shut down conversation on anything they just deem uh right wing alt nazis you know how they just fucking label people uh just because they don't like what they're saying now um entertaining part about this was when they left the room they left it live streaming uh they were outside for three or so hours talking to the police um uh, before they came back in, they were just streaming to 40,000 fans uh, getting super chats, which is where they pay money um, into the chat there so you get a donation. Uh, 40,000 people were watching an empty room full of chairs and uh, for three hours or so. It's fantastic to see that 
even after all that, they come back, they have a bit of a conversation before they go because I'm guessing it's quite late there where they were and probably just wanted to go to bed after all that uh, fucking shit show. But um, you can't stop progress. You can't stop people from having a conversation and you shouldn't. It, freedom of speech is an innate human right, I believe, and... Just having a political discussion is exactly what Americans especially need to do. They need to have a political discussion about things that are going on in their country because if America falls and the way it's looking it is going to fall, um, they keep chipping away at the base of them. And um, America, Americans as a whole, Australians, we like to make fun of them and they like to make fun of us. Um, but, you know, we've spilt blood together We've built, you know, things together. We are the Western side of the world, I would say, is the West, you know, against what used to be communism is a rise of communism in America now, which is um, quite disturbing. I just don't think anyone anyone who's a communist, uh, especially like a uh, American communist, uh, has... Any idea what communism is? You talk to anyone who's ever fled one of those countries or left one of those countries, uh, they do not want communism. But um, it is just a all-out attack on anything that doesn't divide people. It tries to bring people together. Uh, anything that tries to bring Joe Rogan. Squirrelsville, man. Um, you know, just talking about anything, any information. If you're trying to find the truth about anything, they the left and whatever you want to call that whole side is trying to shut people down. Um, we'll take a look at the video here. This is uh, just about when they found out they had to evacuate the building. Uh, I'll have a look. Absolutely. But the problem is it's the business of medicine that right. they're incentivized to have people be ill so that they buy their medicine. Like if the fire department was incentivized to put out fires, and they got paid more for every fire they put we out. We have to evacuate the building. You better right. believe that uh, you see a lot more fires. You guys, I love you. I think <laughs> we're just going to leave the, the keep the live stream going, but we have to ev evacuate the building. All right. All right. We'll be right. You heard so from the, the top. stream. We'll just stay up as it is. Please stay tuned. And we'll be just back. please keep watching in it's case something real. happens. But yeah. we have to evacuate. Do you have the, the wide wide shot? Shot? break? Go to Tommy. Open. We're going to we're going to grab something to drink. We're being told we need to evacuate the building. So keep keep watching. Keep the stream up. And can you do the wide shot? Yeah. All right. Maybe, maybe you'll get to watch something happen. I don't know. We have to get out of the building. Cool. Let's go. That'd be cool, though. Taylor, 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 Taylor saying this? Uh, that's Taylor saying this. Let's go. Who's Taylor? Oh, Tyler. Got it. There we go. Woo! All right. Bye, guys. Now, they go and leave the room to go and deal with the police. And basically, for the next three hours, uh, this is all you see. Uh, an empty room. Their podcast, yeah. I think they need to clean up a bit there. Fucking hell. Um... But yeah, 40,000 people sat there and watched that um, live. I was actually listening to it live when it happened. And I thought, oh, maybe it was not. But it was actually live on YouTube at the time. And um, it just goes to show you 40,000 people will stand there and say, no, we're not, you know, abandoning the conversation. I'm sure everyone's just sticking around to see if the police kicked in the door and uh, threw flashbangs everywhere. <laughs> Which um, I believe the police, yeah, the police did come back in um, at some point there. Oh, here we go. I think I just found it. Yeah, looks like it here. Um, and just had a look around. But um, yeah, you can't just, anytime there's a conversation you don't want to see, or you don't want to hear, you can't just shut it down because that is not how human race progresses. That is not how ideas are formed. And that is not how we work as a society. Now they don't, the people who want that, they don't care. They don't want to hear your opinion. They don't want to fucking listen to any new ideas. They don't want to hear it. They just want you to toe the line, listen to their fucking beliefs and say what they tell you to say. Simon says, and the political parties that generally push that narrative 
are all in it together, I reckon, and they every day they just chip away at our freedom of speech. I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with a YouTuber in Scotland and uh, Count Dankula. Um, quite a funny bloke. His videos are fantastic. If um, his Mad Lad series is great, I love it. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody, says, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, he is basically a product of the internet age. He grew up on the internet. Uh, Reddit forums sleuth, uh, sleuthing through the internet. There, he is a comedian as well, so he's quite funny. Um, but he made a practical joke one day where he taught his dog, which is a pug, to do the uh, Nazi salute every time he said the words gas the Jews. Actually, it was his wife's dog and um, girlfriend at the time. Here's the police now. But, um, ooh, there's special light. Yep, that light. Um, ooh, look, there's a couple of them. Uh, but he was arrested for that. He made a joke, which was quite funny. Every time he said the words, gas the Jews, his dog would do the Nazi salute. Now, I don't know if you'd find that funny, uh, but it is pretty goddamn harmless teaching a pug to do that. I mean, it's not like he was teaching kids to do it. Comedian Marcus Meekin, otherwise known as Count Dankula, was convicted of making a grossly offensive video. In the video, he taught his girlfriend's pug dog to do a Nazi salute whilst he repeated the phrase, gas the Jews. Count Dankula is due to be sentenced in April. Right, Tim, I want to talk about this. Oh, right, right, okay. So some people found this offensive, understandable. Some people found it funny. The video got shared three million times on YouTube with lots of inane comments like lol underneath. Okay, so clearly some people found it funny. What's that tell you, Tim? It tells you that both offence and humour are subjective. Either way, it was a fucking joke, you cunts! And he might go to prison, okay? He was convicted because the judge believed he was inciting racial hatred. It's a fucking pug dog. He was mocking Nazis. I'll tell you where else in history you'd be convicted of a crime for teaching your dog to mock Nazis. Nazi fucking Germany! You can't say anything in most European countries. Australia is getting fucking close there. We are getting pretty close. America at least has their... um bill of rights and constitution and things like that to protect them we do not and if we have anything like that they don't give a fuck about it anyway uh we're not disarmed like americans think we are uh but every day they chip away at our freedoms now Kent dankula he uh he was arrested he's been to court over it's happened several years ago um i think it was a 700 dollar fine he was supposed to pay after everything but um I don't think he's going to pay that fine and he could possibly face jail time. But over 2,000 people a year in England, I don't know if that uh, includes um, Ireland and Scotland as well, but they are arrested for things they say online. Now, if you make a direct threat or uh, you're bullying people, uh, no, not bullying people, but um, threatening people online like say your ex-partner or something like that, you definitely should be um, stopped from doing it. Whatever, you know, the circumstances are of that situation, you don't make threats. You um, don't bully people online, especially um, if it's people you know, it's like kids at school and things like that. But you should be able to make a fucking joke. You should be able to make a statement of what you believe as long as it doesn't break any laws and the issue is they are trying to change the laws so if you say something that offends someone like in england you will be arrested and you can be arrested and they're pushing for that in australia now uh i don't think that'll ever happen in the u.s um i don't think the u.s has got very long until they break down into social anarchy and possibly a civil war i would say um that could be one election cycle away for them. We will see how that goes. Uh, but if they're going to be paying $7 a gallon for petrol um, and Biden's looking at banning guns, or that, that could be uh, escalated quite quickly. Now, in Australia, we are 
a lot more level-headed, I'd say, than some of the uh, Americans. Uh, but they have been whipped up over the last, oh, I'd say, eight years into a frenzy. And there's so much bad blood between two different parties that I don't think they can fix it without resorting to violence. Mind you, um, Americans like to say, look, the right side of America likes, come and take our guns and see how you go at doing that. Let's really see. But I'm yet to see any of them actually stand up and defend themselves from the government. There was a few instances uh, I think it was cattle ranchers. Um, but the right just seems to kowtow every time. The left goes out, burns down cities, kills people, kills police, uh, and nothing happens. And then when the right does something, like um, January 6th, they all sit there and go, oh, it wasn't us, we didn't do it. It was, uh, you know, I don't, the FBI's probably got a lot to do with that if you know anything about it. Uh, look into Ray Epps. But, um, any time that left takes ground, the right in the US seems to concede it. They kick up and kick up a stink every now and then and scream and holler, but um, the Repu Republican Party doesn't seem to do anything. They sit there, beat their fucking chest a lot, and do nothing. They don't accomplish anything. Now, people like Tim Pool, Tim Cast, and the whole gang there, um, Lauren Southern, Alex Jones. Turn the friggin' frogs gay! Joe Rogan. Mm, going deep in your asshole, son. And, uh, that whole community of intelligent people, um, Jordan Peterson, they are fighting the intellectual fight, but I think um, a physical fight will be coming soon, sooner than later. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully everyone calms down and um, pulls their head in. But a whole lot of um, kids these days that seem to think that they are uh, above the law and, you know, the most important things to ever grace the earth, um, they seem to be running the, cunt running the show. They tweet about it um, and companies will, you know, like the Daily Wire, uh, they had sponsors get dropped because of one or two tweets. Uh, people getting cancelled left, right, and centre. Um, basically, if you refuse to be cancelled, you won't be cancelled. But uh, like with Rogan, um, people like that, they try so hard to just shut down any conversation. And I think it's getting more dangerous. And if we don't keep an eye on it here in Australia, we're going to be suffering the same consequences. We won't be able to say what we think we won't be able to joke about what we want to we won't be able to have a conversation that people on the left deem as disruptive or dangerous which can be anything can be from stating facts like there are only two sexes um you know like it's it's got to the point where they've made their own reality and our reality the real reality the truth the physical reality that we live in doesn't matter anymore. If they want to turn their little fucking switch on and change everything to their reality, they can. They're doing it piece by piece. They do, they've do. they taken over places like CNN, um, any mainstream media, ABC and SBS in Australia are disgusting. I can't believe we give them our fucking money. They turn everything into an argument about race and sexual orientation when no one gives shit. That is a major problem in the States is everyone in the States is so preoccupied with race. No one fucking cares. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here. See, nobody cares. Nice hat. No one cares. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, no one cares. Like, live your life, don't hurt anyone and get along. Like. Fucking hell. Get over yourselves. No one cares about your sexual orientation. Don't flirt it in front of kids, you know. And no one will give a shit. If these um, drag parties and shit weren't, you know, being forced upon kids. If drag queens weren't going into libraries and reading to kids. No one would give a fuck. Drag queens are an adult thing. That is for a, a drag... Drag show, RuPaul's Drag Race, that's for adults. I mean, if a kid wants to watch it with parent supervision, 
there's you know PG ratings and M ratings and shit like that for a reason. If in Texas they're taking kids into strip shows, they're not even a drag show. They're stripping and shoving money into half naked men's g strings. That's child abuse, no matter which way you look at it. I mean, if that was just happening in the street with a homeless guy, that would be child abuse. If a homeless man went up to a child in the middle of the street and got the child to put money into his fucking G-string, that would be child abuse and he'd be arrested. But just because you're doing it at a drag show doesn't make it fucking all right. Jesus Christ. It, the religious problem in America is, you know, it, it's it's everything in America has got parties. It's the left, the right, uh, the religious, the non-religious uh pro life fucking woman uh women's choice pro uh pro choice whatever they call it um gun advocates against you know gun control it, everything in the US since the start when it was them versus the English and the then the north versus the south and then the Americans versus the Nazis and then the Americans versus the uh Soviets and communism and now it's people from one reality that they've made up that they're a fucking unicorn uh, rainbow fairy wizard and that you're a bigot and you're a Nazi just because you say, no, that's not correct. When it's not correct, it's the truth. And you just point it out. You don't even have to be a bigot or an asshole about things and they attack you. Um the splitting of realities is going too far. It's it's like that scene where uh, in Lie Lie with Jim Carrey where he's trying to get the pen and he's like, the pen is red. Uh, he's trying to say it's red, but it's blue and he can't. It, it, it's like that. The pen is blue. The pen is blue. The goddamn pen is blue. <laughs> They're trying to get you to say something that isn't real with pronouns and um, not even just that. It's like you're saying that that's racist and it's not racist. The biggest racists I've seen are coming from the left. I mean, they're the ones shouting the N-word at Antifa protests against uh, the opposite side. And they're calling them, um, I'm not going to repeat it on here, obviously. They're calling them porch things and um house n words because they're a right leaning person or a, or they were a trump voter um it's disgusting and it's coming to a head and it's going to be coming to a head soon i believe i reckon uh if they can get to the next next election cycle if trump runs it's going to be a fucking shit show and here in australia we're sitting back and going it's got nothing to do with us but how much are you paying for fuel where are your gro are you running out of food and groceries? They have a lot more to do with us than you'd like to admit. You know, um, we own firearms here in Australia. Uh, the Americans like to believe we don't have any. Uh, we all know better. But <clears throat> if they ban guns in other countries over shootings like uh, Jacinda Ardern's over in the US the other day talking to Biden about it... Um, <clears throat> If they're trying to do it in Canada over a shooting that happened in the US, that laws don't have to stay inside the country. If something happens in the US, it rebounds and affects us over here. It's a ripple across the ocean. Uh, their president matters to us because it has to. Uh, it's, don't like it. If Trump was still in... Um, the things he would be doing would still be affecting us. I guarantee you, we wouldn't be paying so much for fucking fuel. We probably wouldn't be uh, sending millions of dollars of aid into uh, our military equipment into Ukraine. Uh, it affects us whether we like it or not. And I think if you're none the wiser to it, you're actually doing everyone around you and the country as a whole a disservice. Manuel, you know nothing. You always say, Mr. Fawlty, but I learn. What? I learn, I learn. No, 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 no. I no. get better. No, 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 you don't understand. I do. No, you don't. I, I do understand that. <laughs> so, 
keep up to date on these things, um, learn what's going on in the world around you, not just your tiny little social bubble. Um, so we can find out and maybe when someone asks you a question about something, you already have an opinion formed on it. So when you go to the voting booths, you don't end up with fucking Albanese. <laughs> not that anyone there in the, um, was worth it. I think we should do what the Dutch did and probably get rid of a lot of them. I think the Dutch even ate their own prime minister at some point. I don't think we need to go that far, but maybe, maybe we could um, do a Harold Holt on him. <laughs> it's a joke, you fucking cunts! But um, you gotta keep an, you gotta keep a price of these things. I know it's it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if you're ignorant to what's going on around you, that's when bad shit happens to you. And you, if you you get handcuffs put on you and you get pushed into a fucking COVID gulag in the middle of Australia, and uh, you go, why? How did that happen? Why did that happen? Well, you saw the signs. They were coming for three years now. Um, you should have been paying attention, and it's your fault you're in there. I don't watch the news because I'm a kid, and apparently every time, apparently Grandpa just gives me a remote after we watch the Powerball. If you don't pay attention to the political, you know, ongoings in the world at the moment, you're going to be slapped across the face with it when you don't like it, when you don't want it. Uh, you're going to be hit with, you know, seven dollar fuel, uh, seven dollar a litre fuel prices and no food, no baby food, no toilet paper. And you're going to be sitting there scratching your head going, how the fuck did this happen? Because you weren't paying attention because you weren't listening to everything that's going on. You don't have to even pay that much attention. Like just watching a couple of podcasts or shows or reading an actual, instead of just reading the titles on things, actually reading the article you might get a better idea about it. I'm sure if a lot of people um, listen to what's going on and listen to things like Tim Cast and Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson and things like that, uh, we'd be in a lot better, a lot better uh, way. The sheep are a sheep for a reason. Sheep farmers don't have one sheep; they have hundreds. You know, they have a lot of sheep. So sheep will just keep being sheep, and I think more sheep need to wake the fuck up before it's too late. And hopefully they do. <sighs> Thanks for joining us here on Crossing the Line. I will see you guys next time.